This is week six of the spring trimester of 2017. I'm Jennifer Marie and this is my Atelier Diary. Reminder that there's a workshop happening this summer at my Atelier in Chicago. My instructor Magda will be teaching it and I'll be assisting. The workshop's split into two and you can either take one or both two-week drawing course and a four-week painting course. It's the same drawing painting system that we go through at the Atelier. So if you're curious about what is taught at Ravenswood and want to experience it or just want to get better at fundamentals with drawing and painting. You should think about signing up. So I have all the information down in the description box below. I also have my email address so email me if you have any questions or if you want to register. Also all of my followers get 15% off tuition. Okay so we started a new long pose for the figure session. I really love this pose. It's super dynamic and so really fun to try and capture this really strong gesture that Delon's holding. So on Monday, what I did was I did little pencil drawings to get used to the pose. I forgot to take pictures of them. But so what I do is I'm not looking to do a finished drawing at all with these little pencil drawings that I do. It's just to get myself used to the gesture, see what are the, the biggest, most simplified lines that make up the pose. So also seeing which these big simplified lines then I can push and change that really make up the pose so I can make it stronger. For this specific pose, what I'm finding is I'll get the, the head and the feet and the shoulders in, but then the lines that are going down vertical, I'm seeing that to really help the pose, I can simplify it from the shoulder that's on the right, so I'll take a line down from that shoulder and I can sweep it pretty much all the way down to the ankle. So it goes from the shoulder past the arm down to the ankle. And then on the reverse side of that, on the left side, from the armpit, from the raised arm, I'll go down to his, um, his waist and then I'll break the line up. So I'll go from the waist and then from the waist down, I'll sweep a line down to the other ankle. So working with those three big lines, I can really make sure that the, articulate that the, the hips are really moving out from the body. The hips are really moving out from the shoulders. So it's um, a big movement from shoulders, hips to ankles. And then I break it up. A little bit further from that as well and so I'm seeing that the the main gesture is this big nice arch of Delon's body but then what counters this is the bent leg so the bent leg coming off the hips you have the arch and then that leg comes off of it like that that counters it a little bit and just gives um, more dynamic movement from it so with I'm watching and seeing how his body's moving during the day, um, seeing how he sets into the pose and seeing what things shift. And so to make it the gesture as strong as I can, I'm seeing that when his that bent leg, which bent legs they'll always the knee will swing in and out a little bit. So when the knee is swung out, it makes it a stronger gesture because instead of then from the hips going down to the ankles, um, if the knee's in a little bit, it just kind of follows the other leg. But then having the knee be out of it, it just gives it a little more of a different, stronger gesture as instead of it following the other leg, you see that movement coming out towards the viewer, but also having a stronger ankle. So then on Tuesday, I started the big drawing. So I have two pieces of Canson paper taped up and I'm using charcoal. I'm using vine charcoal that is... Um, I'm kind of going in between a hard vine charcoal and a medium one. And I also don't sharpen these pieces either. I want them to be kind of blunt, so i just getting like the movement lines down on the paper and I'm not being locked into anything, so I don't want the charcoal to be too overly sharp. So it makes um, fuzzier lines, so I feel like I have a lot of freedom to move everything around as much as I want. This gesture, I feel like I got it in pretty fast, which is awesome. I am on this first day of working on the big drawing. I'm doing everything that I did for the small pencil drawing. So I'm, I'm going for the, starting off the really biggest, simplest lines that I can think of, trying to break the pose down into as few lines of po as possible, but also as 
long of lines as possible. And once I feel like I get the, the movement of the pose with as few long lines as I can, then I'll start breaking it up, not to show more detail, but breaking it up in a ways that make the gesture look stronger and more specific to what Delon is actually doing. One thing that I like doing for getting these gestures to make sure that my gesture doesn't look like he's more up and down than he is because I feel like that is easy to do or more common to do with making a pose is that there's a tendency to get the figure to look more straight up and down rather than like the relaxed more dynamic move of what a person would actually hold themselves in. So one way or one thing that I do to make sure that I'm getting the actual pose that I'm seeing in nature is that I'll look at the negative shape from the whole entire negative shape on the left side and the whole negative shape on the right side of the figure. And I'll look at that and compare it to what I have in my drawing and make sure where it like the negative shape cuts in on the body, make sure that I'm getting as dramatic as it's doing it in life and making sure that I am have both sides too. So I'm not just looking at one side and then my drawing, but really looking at the whole entire figure. And so I think that helps me definitely. It's not just looking at the figure, but the negative shape that's around the figure as well. So I feel like I got the gesture in pretty quickly and I wanted to check myself. I still had some time at the end of the day, so what I did was I filled in, I put a light tone in for the shadow shape. And I feel like I do this sooner than maybe other people do with putting in tone. I definitely like to see in masses and it helps me to see, when I can see a light shape and a shadow shape clearly with expressed with tone because then I, I feel like I can see how I can move these big masses to try and get the drawing even more accurate. So after doing that I definitely saw where I could shift and move stuff around a bit. Wednesday I was working in locking in what I had done on Tuesday and really checking myself, making sure that the gesture is as specific to Delon's gesture as I can get it. Um, this day I was really focused then also on countering the gesture, what I was talking about, what I did, what I was seeing on Monday where you had that big sweep of Delon's whole body but the leg that, the bent leg that comes off that even emphasizes that curve of Delon even more. So Wednesday with locking in the pose um, I'm more working with the torso and then the legs because arms, I usually leave the arms for last because if a pose isn't, if they're not resting their arm on anything and Dawn has a pole that he's holding but the pole isn't fixed to anything so it can kind of swing out and in. So I feel like it's better for me to lock in the things that are going to be more consistent which is like the whole trunk and legs of Delon. So I'll make sure that I'll get those in first and then later on I'll get the arms and I'll find the arms off of the, the trunk that I really locked in. For locking in that the middle section of Delon, what I do is I'll think of the shoulders and the waist and work on kind of that whole big shape. And then with getting the hips, I'll look at the hips compared to the shoulders. And then with getting the legs in, I think of doing the hips to the knees and then I'll work on the hips to the knees to the ankles. And so I kind of work that way where I'm trying to, you kind of have to, or I feel like I, I can't all the time be taking in the whole form of Delon while I'm breaking up these smaller pieces like hips and legs. But even with working in the legs, I still try and take it in big pieces like thinking the hips to the knees to the ankles and then I'll try and keep going back and checking myself and making sure that with putting in the knees that the, the knees are still making sense to the hips and the shoulders. So even though I have to break it down I'm still trying to make sure that I'm like circling around the whole piece of the lawn and not just um, focusing on smaller things that might make me capture Delon in different poses that don't make up an accurate person at the end. So then on Thursday I worked on the arms and the portrait. So I spent a lot of time on the portrait and moving around the head. With doing the portrait I'm erased the head and I wanted to get the big shape of the head again. So I'm thinking about the big shape of the head, of the head how it fits on the shoulders. Also when I put my first detail in of the head 
I'll put in the ear. So putting in the ear, I can see in relation with how his head is tilted, how far his head is lifted up or down compared to the shoulders. And then I'll usually, from the ear, I'll break it up by either putting the nose in or start with the forehead and slowly break it up from there. But um, keep trying to think of how the whole head is sitting on top of the shoulders. Because I remember when I first started doing these drawings, I always gave the person either no neck or the face would be too, the face might be accurate, but it might be too far pushed over. So then the head looked like it didn't sit on the shoulders as accurately as it could have. So even when I'm working in smaller details, I'm still trying to make sure that the details or the planes that make up the portrait um, are still making sense with the whole entire gesture. And then locking in the arms, what I do then to break up the arms is first get the whole simple part of the arm in. And so for the arm that's resting on the side, that one's really easy to put in really quickly. It's just, I'll just do one line from the shoulder down to the hand and I'll usually put in a little tick that shows where the, the fingers are so I can see then like a really quick representation of the hand. And then for the arm that's up, what I'll do is I'll try and really quickly put in that arm by doing a line that is going from the armpit to the elbow and the elbow up to the hand. And then once I have those in and trying to get those line, the bigger lines to make sense with the gesture, I'll start to break it up by going from the, the shoulder to the elbow on both arms at the same time. And then from the elbow to the wrists, wrists to the hands. I'm really happy with how the one that's down looks, but the one that I captured, this that's up. So he is kind of sw swinging his arm in and out. And I feel like in the gesture that I had captured previously, his arm was more locked up like this. And now it's swinging out a lot more. So I kind of, well, I locked in the shoulder to the elbow, but the elbow to the wrist, I'm feeling like I'm gonna have to move it out more because he's more consistently having his arm that's holding the pole swung out. So that one I just kind of really simply put in. And Friday I started the painting. So I took my drawing and I transferred it to my canvas. I do that by taking tracing paper, I put it over the drawing, I take a marker and I trace out the big lines that I made for the drawing. Take the tracing paper off, I flip it to the reverse side and I'll take a really soft piece of charcoal and I'll go over the back of the lines. Take the tracing paper, put it onto my canvas and then I'll take a hard piece of charcoal and I'll trace those marker lines that have the charcoal on the back. And so tracing them with a harder piece of charcoal is pushing, pushing the softer charcoal onto the canvas. So when I take the tracing paper off, I have a pretty good representation of my transfer drawing on my canvas. So then I will mix up the shadow color. So I'm using a limited palette for this. So I have black, cadmium red light, yellow ochre, and white. So I don't use white. I use the other three colors to mix up a shadow color. And, and this time I didn't use any turpentine or any medium or anything like that. I just dry brushed the paint over the lines, filled in the shadow shape so I could see the masses of light shape and shadow shape and then started correcting things from there. So the goal for this is to get everything that I had for my transfer drawing but still try and make it stronger. So for the previous day I said that I'd really simply put in the arm that's holding the pole, especially from the elbow to the hand. So I tried to draw that in more accurately this time. Though I see that, I think the arm's too long. I think the length from the shoulder to the elbow is fine, but from the elbow to the wrist, I made that too long. So that's fine. I've got a whole lot of time that I can fix that, that I can fix that with paints because I have four weeks that I'm painting on this. It was totally a bummer though that I didn't see it. I posted it on social media and a friend texted me and was saying that it looks like the arm's too long. And then once they said that, I totally saw it. I was like, no, I thought I had it, everything pretty accurate. So that's a shame. Good that it was pointed out though, so that I can, um, you know, be fixing it and get it a more accurate drawing. And now for my cast drawing. So last Friday, Magda was showing me how I can paint the forms better on that main focal baby head. And so she was showing me how to do that by literally painting the forms and telling me what she was doing. It was so helpful. 
She ran out of time though and wanted to come back on Monday to work on getting the highlights on. So that's what we did on Monday. So I mixed up my palette with the paints and she took my palette and brushes and was showing me how to paint on the highlights. So for the highlights, she was saying to make sure that there were no clear edges really and making sure that the highlights were diffusing out well. And she always talks about how if you have a light bulb and it's off, you can clearly see the edges of the light bulb. But then when you turn it on, it's so bright and to get it that luminous look, you can't really see the edges anymore because the light keeps spreading out. So that's what she was showing me to do with the highlights. She was also putting the paint down in different ways, um, doing a more impasto way of painting, so getting thicker paint down. Some areas she would use a palette knife, some areas she would just kind of pile it on a little bit more with just using a brush, and making sure it's smooth but also built up so it's catching more light. Also with that, with doing the highlight, she wasn't literally just putting on the highlight but still working around areas for the whole head to make the parts of the planes that are the brightest parts look as, mo as most or as luminous as they actually appear. So for example, there's the highlight, the biggest, strongest highlight that's on the top part of the head. And so what she would do was see that and see by making it look, appear brighter, she would take, she would, the plane that's behind that, that's sitting back a little bit, she would darken that a little bit to make the contrast of that bright plane look even brighter. So she's painting the highlight, but then also changing other things so everything accommodated the highlight to make it look as bright and luminous as possible. Tuesday, I wanted to practice what she was showing me on Friday and Monday with that main focal baby head. So then I worked on the baby head that's all the way over to the right. That one I know needed work to be done on it anyway, and I wanted to make sure that everything that I was doing on that head was subservient to the main focal baby head. So what I did was I started from the shadows and I started to work my way up to the lights. Doing the things that she was showing me, which was not worrying about any detail yet until you have the planes of the head making sense to how they are, to make it look as, um, have as much volume as it had. Doing that, I was painting it a lot faster than I had been before and I was really liking the result that I was getting as well. I did run out of time that day to, so I worked from the shadows to the lights and then I wanted to work from the lights back down to the shadows. I didn't quite have enough time to do the lights back down to the shadows, so the head is a bit darker than what I want it to be, so I'm gonna have to go back in and then work from the lights down to the shadows. So. It still has the, the volume, but it's as bright as it needs to be as well. One good thing about having this cast be as huge as it is, is that I like how Magda can work on one head and show me how I can be painting it better, but then I have three other heads on the cast that I can practice that, which I think is really cool, because usually uh, the casts that I've been doing before are really small in comparison to this big one, so um, once I work on one area, the cast is kind of done um, so I can't practice it too much further so I'm really happy that this cast is so huge that I can keep practicing what they're teaching me all over the whole thing. Okay so Wednesday then for this cast I worked on the background starting behind that focal baby head so Magda was saying that with the background I need to be making sure that it is subservient to that main focal baby head and so the main focal baby head has the most contrast and has the most detail shown in it. So the background then, I want to make sure that nothing is competing detail or contrast wise. So I repainted the whole background that's behind all of the babies and I really like the effect now that it has because I feel like it sits behind those babies a lot better. I was also practicing what she was showing me when she was painting the main focal baby head with um, she would be keep going back and forth. She would be connecting the shadows, connecting the darker half tones, connecting the mid tones, connecting the lights, and keep going back and forth with connecting those groups of tones, which was keeping everything unified. So I was doing that with the background because there are definitely strips of light, strips of darker tones, lighter tones, different colors of tones, 
and I would just keep going back and forth and keep trying to connect them all. And I feel that it gave a lot more unity to that back piece, made it more accurate, and also helping it sit behind those babies as it does in nature. Thursday then, I talked to Matt what I should do next for the cast. So what I had been doing previously was I keep going back to the focal point and working out from the focal point, trying to make sure that everything is subservient to the focal point and it keeps going less and less contrast as it goes out to the size of the cast. But there's also these points that I haven't touched in a really long time on the cast. For example, there's a hand behind the baby that's all the way over to the left that is needs a lot of work for it. And then also the, the baby that's all the way over to the left too, the, the head's okay, but everything else, the body of it, um, is pretty far behind compared to everything else. There's also an area on the bottom part of the cast that's pretty far behind that I can correct. And so I was asking Matt if I should be going back to the focal point and working out from it, or if I should work on the parts that are the farthest behind. And he said I should definitely go back to the parts that are the farthest behind. And so I worked on the baby that's all the way over to the left, the one that's been left pretty far behind from the other ones. And a lot of it was making sure that the, the shapes were more accurate, the values were more accurate, and also the edges, the edges that I had before were really fairly sharp, so I softened them where they needed to be. And doing this, I felt like it helped the whole cast a whole bunch, so I'm really glad that I did that. And then on Friday, working on that same baby all the way over to the left, I worked on the leg and the foot. So I feel like that corner of the cast is pretty good. Um, I still know I want to work on the bottom part of the cast. I still got to get that cannon that's behind the head. I worked on it a little bit, but um, the sun was starting to go down and I think I was so tired that I worked on it, but I don't know if I improved it at all. So I know I gotta go back and work on that hand more. Now for the extras during the week. So Monday we have our portrait class, which is new. This is the first one that I painted. Really had a lot of fun with it. So mostly just working like a wash on it. And what I did was I mixed up the shadow color that's making the wash and then later on I mixed up some lighter values and I put those in for the face. And what I was using was all round brushes because I never use round brushes and I don't know why. So I thought since these are just these three hour fun studies I would use brushes that I have that I don't normally use so I can kind of get more used to them. But I really like the effect of it as the face and the hair really blend out gradually. It was a lot of fun to do and so I'm excited next Monday to work on another portrait like this. And then Tuesday we have an extra drawing session and so I did a little pencil drawing of Rex and I like how this one turned out too.